Spore is a 2008 life simulation real-time strategy single-player sandbox god game developed by Maxis and designed by Will Wright, released for Microsoft Windows and Mac OS X covering many genres including action, real-time strategy, and role-playing games. Spore allows a player to control the development of a species from its beginnings as a microscopic organism, through development as an intelligent and social creature, to interstellar exploration as a spacefaring culture. It has drawn wide attention for its massive scope, and its use of open-ended gameplay and procedural generation. Throughout each stage, players are able to use various creators to produce content for their games. These are then automatically uploaded to the online Sporepedia and are accessible by other players for download. Spore was released after several delays to generally favorable reviews. Praise was given for the fact that the game allowed players to create customized creatures, vehicles and buildings. However, Spore was criticized for its gameplay which was seen as shallow by many reviewers. GameSpot remarked, "...individual gameplay elements are extremely simple." Controversy surrounded Spore for Securum, its digital rights management software, which can potentially open the user's computer to security risks. <laughs> gameplay Spore allows the player to develop a species from a microscopic organism to its evolution into a complex animal, its emergence as a social, intelligent being, to its mastery of the planet and then finally to its ascension into space, where it interacts with alien species across the galaxy. Throughout the game, the player's perspective and species change dramatically. The game is broken up into distinct stages. The outcome of one phase affects the initial conditions and leveling facing the player in the next. Each phase exhibits its own style of play, and has been described by the developers as ten times more complicated than its preceding phase. Phases often feature optional missions, when the player completes a mission, they are granted a bonus, such as a new ability or money. If all of a player's creations are completely destroyed at some point, the species will be respawned at its nearest colony or at the beginning of the phase. Unlike many other Maxis games, Spore has a primary win condition, which is obtained by reaching a supermassive black hole placed at the center of the galaxy and receiving a staff of life. However, the player may continue to play after any goal has been achieved. The first four phases of the game, if the player uses the editors only minimally, will take up to 15 hours to complete, but can take as little as one or two hours. Note that there is no time limit for any stage, the player may stay in a single stage as long as they wish, and progress to the next stage when ready. At the end of each phase, the player's actions cause their creature to be assigned a characteristic. Each phase has three characteristics, usually based on how aggressively or peacefully the phase was played. Characteristics determine how the creature will start the next phase and give it abilities that can be used later in the game. Topic. Stages Spore is a game that is separated into stages, each stage presenting a different type of experience with different goals to achieve. The five stages are the cell stage, the creature stage, the tribal stage, the civilization stage, and the space stage. Once the primary objective is completed, the player has the option to advance to the next stage, or continue playing the current stage. Topic. Cell stage The cell stage sometimes referred to as the tide pool, cellular, or microbial stage is the very first stage in the game, and begins with a cinematic explanation of how the player's cell got onto the planet through the scientific concept of panspermia, with a meteor crashing into the ocean of a planet and breaking apart, revealing a single-celled organism. The player guides this simple microbe around in a 3D environment on a single 2D plane, reminiscent of flow, where it must deal with fluid dynamics and predators, while eating meat chunks or plants. The player may choose whether the creature is a herbivore or carnivore prior to starting the stage. The player can find meteor bits, apparently from the aforementioned panspermic meteor, or kill other cells to find parts that upgrade their creature by adding abilities such as electricity, poison or other parts. Once the microbe has found a part, the player can call a mate to enter the editor, in which they can modify the shape and abilities of the microbe by spending DNA points earned by eating organisms in the stage. 
The cell's eating habits in the cell stage directly influence its diet in the creature stage, and only mouths appropriate to the diet herbivore, carnivore, or omnivore established in the cell stage will become available in the creature stage. Once the player decides to progress to the next stage, the creature editor appears, prompting the user to add legs before the shift to land. The creature editor differs in that it gives the player the ability to make major changes to the creature's body shape and length, and place parts in three-dimensional space instead of a top-down view as in the cell editor. Topic. Creature stage In the creature stage, the player creates their own land creature intended to live on a single continent. If the player attempts to swim to another island, an unidentified monster eats the player, and the player is warned not to come again. The biosphere contains a variety of animal species which carnivorous and omnivorous creatures can hunt for food, and fruit-bearing plants intended for herbivores and omnivores. The player creature's hunger becomes a measured stat as well as its health in this stage. Depletion of the hunger meter results in health depletion and eventual death of the player creature unless food is eaten. In the creature stage, the player has a home nest where members of their own species are located. The nest is where the player responds following death, and acts as a recovery point for lost HP. Other species' nests are spread throughout the continent. While interacting with them, the player can choose to be social or aggressive. How the player interacts with other creatures will affect their opinion of the player's species. For instance, by mimicking their social behaviors singing, dancing etc., NPC creatures will eventually consider the player an ally, but if the player harms members of their species, they will flee or become aggressive upon sighting them. Epic creatures, which are rare, aggressive creatures more than 20 times the player's height, feature prominently in the creature stage. There are also rogue creatures which may be befriended or attacked. Additionally, spaceships may appear in this stage and abduct a creature. Progress in the creature stage is determined by the player's decisions on whether to befriend or attack other species, and to which degree, these decisions will affect the abilities of the player's species in subsequent stages of the game. Successful socialization and hunting attempts will give DNA points, which may be spent on many new body parts. The player will also be rewarded with multiple DNA points for allying with or completely extincting a species. Placing new parts in the creature editor comes at the expense of DNA points. More expensive parts will further upgrade the player creature's abilities for either method of interaction, as well as secondary abilities such as flight, speed or boosted health. After the player is finished editing, a newly evolved generation of creatures will be present in the home nest as the player's creature hatches. As the player's creature befriends or hunts more creatures, its intelligence and size increases until it is able to form a tribe. Topic. Tribal stage After the brain of the player's species evolves sufficiently, the species may enter the tribal stage. The species design becomes permanent, and the player sheds control of an individual creature in favor of the entire tribe group, as the game focuses on the birth of division of labor for the species. The player is given a hut, a group of fully evolved creatures, as well as two of six possible consequence abilities, unlocked depending on the species' behavior in the previous phases. This is only possible if the player played the previous stages. If the player started directly from the galaxy screen, their locked gameplay during this stage is styled as an RTS. Rather than controlling one creature, the player now controls an entire tribe and can give them commands such as gathering food, attacking other tribes or simply moving to a certain location. The player may give the tribe tools such as weapons, musical instruments, and healing or food gathering implements. Food now replaces DNA points as the player's currency, and can be spent on structures and additional tribe members, or used to appease other tribes. Tribe members also gain the option to wear clothes, the editing of which replaces the creature editor in the tribal outfitter. Combat can be made more effective with weapons like stone axes, spears, and torches. For socializing, a player can obtain musical instruments, wooden horns, maracas and didgeridoos. Miscellaneous tools can be used for fishing and gathering food and for healing tribe members. All tools, however, require a specialized tool shack, which costs food to build. Tribe members can also gather food, an essential concept. The diet choice that the player made in prior stages, whether herbivore, omnivore, or carnivore, determines what food the tribe can gather and eat. 
Animals can be hunted for meat, and fish or seaweed can be speared for food. Fruit is gathered from trees and bushes, and players can also domesticate animals for eggs, which all diet types can eat. Any foreign animals in the player's pack in the creature stage are automatically added to the tribe as farm animals. Epic creatures may threaten nests or tribes. Allied tribes will occasionally bring the player gifts of food. Players can steal food from other tribes though it angers them, and dead tribes may be pillaged for their food. There are five other tribes that appear along with the player's tribe. For every tribe befriended or destroyed, a piece of a totem pole is built, which may increase the population limit of the player's tribe or grant access to new tools and clothes. When all five tribes are allied or conquered, the player may move forward to the civilization stage. Topic. Civilization stage The events of tribal stage have left the player's tribe the dominant species of the planet, but the species itself has now fragmented into many separate nations. The player retains control of a single nation with one city. The goal in the civilization phase is to gain control of the entire planet, and it is left to the player to decide whether to conquer it using military force, diplomacy, or religious influence. Two new editors, the building and vehicle editors are used to create city buildings and vehicles. The player can place three types of buildings house, factory, and entertainment around the city hall which can also be customized and may build up to three types of vehicles sea, land and air at each city. These vehicles serve military, economic or religious purposes. The main unit of currency is sporebucks, which is used to purchase vehicles and buildings. To earn income, players can capture spice geysers and set up spice derricks at their locations, conduct trade, or build factories. In constructing vehicles and buildings, as with most real-time strategy games, there is a capacity limit, building houses will increase the cap, and constructing various buildings adjacent to one another will provide a productivity bonus or deficit. The presence of other nations requires the player to continue expanding their empire using military force, propaganda, or simply buying out cities. Players can choose their method of global domination depending on the types of cities they own. Military states grow solely by attacking other cities. Nations with a religious trait construct special missionary units that convert other cities via religious propaganda. Likewise, economic states communicate solely by trade and have no weapons except for defensive turrets. If the player's nation captures a city of a different type, they can choose to have the city retain its original type if they wish. Players of all three ideological paths can eventually use a superweapon, which requires a large number of cities and sporebucks, but gives the player a significant advantage over rival nations. Aside from enemy nations, epic creatures may threaten individual cities. Topic. Space stage The space stage provides new goals and paths as the player's species begins to spread through the galaxy. The game adopts the principle of mediocrity, as there are numerous forms of life scattered throughout the galaxy. The player controls a single spaceship, built at the beginning of the space stage. The player can travel by clicking on other planets and moons and stars, though each jump costs energy. Later in the game, the player can purchase a wormhole key which enables them to travel through black holes, offering instant transportation to a sister black hole. There are around 500,000 planets in the game's galaxy orbiting around 100,000 stars, including Earth and its star, Sol. Players can make contact with other space-faring civilizations, or empires which sport many different personalities and worldviews, ranging from diplomatic and polite species willing to ally, to distrustful, fanatical empires more willing to wage war. Completing missions for an empire improves the player's relationship with them, as does trading and assisting in fending off attacks. When the player has become allied with an empire, they can ask certain favors of the empire. If the player becomes enemies with an empire, they will send a small fleet of ships to attack the player's ship as soon as they enter their territory. One of the main goals in the space stage is for the player to push their way toward a supermassive black hole at the galaxy's center, which introduces the game's final antagonists, the Groks, a unique species of cybernetic aliens with a powerful empire of 2,400 systems surrounding the core. Getting to the center of the galaxy and entering starts a cinematic in which the player is introduced to Steve. 
After the cinematic dialogue with Steve ends the player is shot out of the black hole, and gets rewarded with the Staff of Life. Another major goal in the game was to eradicate the Grox, which yielded an achievement. Galactic Adventures If Galactic Adventures is installed, the player may be given missions which involve traveling to planets, beaming down and completing Maxi's created, planetside, adventures. With this expansion, the player can also outfit their captain with weapons and accessories which assist in these adventures. The occupants of allied ships can also take part. Topic: <inaudible> Editors, Creators. User-generated content is a major feature of Spore. There are 18 different editors, some unique to a phase. All have the same general UI and controls for positioning, scaling, and coloring parts, whether for the creation of a creature or for a building or vehicle. The creature editor, for example, allows the player to take what looks like a lump of clay with a spine and mold it into a creature. Once the torso is shaped, the player can add parts such as legs, arms, feet, hands, noses, eyes, and mouths. Many of these parts affect the creature's abilities speed, strength, diet, etc., while some parts are purely decorative. Once the creature is formed, it can be painted using a large number of textures, overlays, colors, and patterns, which are procedurally applied depending on the topology of the creature. The only required feature is the mouth. All other parts are optional, for example, creatures without legs will slither on the ground like a slug or an inchworm, and creatures without arms will be unable to pick up objects. There are two new editors seen in the new expansion Spore, Galactic Adventures, these include the Captain Editor also called the Captain Outfitter and the Adventure Creator, which enables terraforming and placing objects freely on adventure planets. <laughs> <laughs> Community Spore's user community functionality includes a feature that is part of an agreement with YouTube granting players the ability to upload a YouTube video of their creature's activity directly from within the game, and EA's creation of the Spore YouTube channel, which will showcase the most popular videos created this way. In addition, some user-created content will be highlighted by Maxis at the official Spore site, and earn badges of recognition. One of Spore's most social features is the Sporecast, an RSS feed that players can use to subscribe to the creations of any specific Spore player, allowing them to track their creations. There is a toggle which allows the player to restrict what downloadable content will be allowed. Choices include no user-generated content, official Maxis approved content, downloadable friend content, and all user-created content. Players can elect to ban content in-game, at any time, and Maxis monitors content for anything deemed inappropriate, issuing bans for infractions of content policy. <laughs> Spore API Spore has also released an API application programming interface to allow developers to access data about player activity, the content they produce and their interactions with each other. The Spore API is a collection of RESTful public web services that return data in XML format. In April 2009, the results of the Spore API contest was concluded with winners building interactive visualizations, games, mobile applications and content navigation tools. The API also includes a developer's forum for people wishing to use all the creations people have made to create applications. Topic: Interplay. The game is referred to as a massively single player online game and asynchronous sharing. Simultaneous multiplayer gaming is not a feature of Spore. The content that the player can create is uploaded automatically to a central database, cataloged and rated for quality based on how many users have downloaded the object or creature in question, and then redistributed to populate other players' games. The data transmitted is very small, only a couple of kilobytes per item transmitted, due to procedural generation of material. Via the in-game, MySpore page. Players receive statistics of how their creatures are faring in other players' games, which has been referred to as the alternate realities of the Spore metaverse. The game reports to the player on how other players have interacted with him or her. 
For example, the game reports how many times other players have allied with the player's species. The personalities of user-created species are dependent on how the user played them. Players can share creations, chat, and roleplay in the Sporum, the game's internet forum hosted by Maxis. Multiple sections allow forum users to share creations and tips for the game, as well as roleplay. Sporpedia The Sporpedia keeps track of nearly every gameplay experience, including the evolution of a creature by graphically displaying a timeline which shows how the creature incrementally changed over the eons. It also keeps track of the creature's achievements, both noteworthy and dubious, as a species. The Sporpedia also keeps track of all the creatures, planets, vehicles and other content the player encounters over the course of a game. Players can upload their creations to Spore.com to be viewed by the public at the Sporpedia website. The ever-growing list of creations made by players is past the 100 million mark so far. <laughs> <laughs> Procedural generation Spore uses procedural generation extensively in relation to content pre-made by the developers. Wright mentioned in an interview given at E3 2006 that the information necessary to generate an entire creature would be only a couple of kilobytes, and went on to give the following analogy, think of it as sharing the DNA template of a creature while the game, like a womb, builds the phenotypes of the animal, which represent a few uploaded and downloaded freely and quickly from the Sporpedia online server. This allows users to asynchronously upload their creations and download other players' content, which enriches the experience of the game as more of its players' progress in the game. Reception IGN Australia awarded Spore a 9.2 out of 10 score, saying it spore will make you acknowledge just how far we've come, and just how far we have to go, and Spore will change the way you think about the universe we live in." PC Gamer UK awarded the game a 91%, saying, "...Spore's triumph is painfully ironic. By setting out to instill a sense of wonderment at creation and the majesty of the universe, it's shown us that it's actually a lot more interesting to sit here at our computers and explore the contents of each other's brains." In its 4.5 of 5 star review, GameSpy wrote, "Spore is a technological triumph that introduces a whole new way of tapping into a bottomless well of content." Most of the criticism of Spore came from the lack of depth in the first four phases, summarized by Eurogamer's 9 of 10 review, which stated, "For all their mighty purpose, the first four phases of the game don't always play brilliantly, and they're too fleeting." 1UP.com reasoned in its B-plus graded review, "...it's not a perfect game, but it's definitely one that any serious gamer should try." GameSpot in its 8.0 of 10 review called Spore, "...a legitimately great game that will deliver hours of quality entertainment," but criticized the "...individual gameplay elements that are extremely simple." Jason Ocampo's IGN 8.8 .8 of 10 review stated, Maxis has made an impressive product that does so many incredible things." But added, "...while Spore is an amazing product, it's just not quite an amazing game." The New York Times review of Spore mostly centered on lack of depth and quality of gameplay in the later phases of the game, stating that, "...most of the basic core play dynamics in Spore are unfortunately rather thin." While a review in PC Gamer US stated that, it just isn't right to judge Spore in the context of so many of the other games we judge." Zero Punctuation was also critical of the game, claiming it did not live up to the legacy of The Sims. The chief failing of Spore is that it's trying to be five games, each one a shallow and cut-down equivalent of another game, with the Civilization stage even going so far as to be named after civilization its bastardizing. Criticism has also emerged surrounding the stability of the game, with the Daily Telegraph stating, The launch of Spore, the keenly anticipated computer game from the creators of The Sims, has been blighted by technical problems. In an interview published by MTV, Spore designer Will Wright responded to early criticism that the phases of the game had been dumbed down by explaining, We were very focused, if anything, on making a game for more casual players. 
Spore has more depth than, let's say, The Sims did. But we looked at the Metacritic scores for Sims 2, which was around 90, and something like Half-Life, which was 97, and we decided—quite a while back, that we would rather have the Metacritic and sales of Sims 2 than the Metacritic and sales of Half-Life." In its first three weeks on sale, the game sold 2 million copies, according to Electronic Arts. It received a silver sales award from the Entertainment and Leisure Software Publishers Association ELSPA, indicating sales of at least 100,000 copies in the United Kingdom. Topic. DRM controversy Spore uses a modified version of the controversial Digital Rights Management DRM software Securum as copy protection, which requires authentication upon installation and when online access is used. This system was announced after the originally planned system met opposition from the public, as it would have required authentication every 10 days. Additionally, EA released the game under a policy by which the product key of an individual copy of the game would only be authenticated on up to three computers. In response to customer complaints, this limit was raised to five computers. After the activation limit has been depleted, EA customer service will consider further activations on a case-by-case -case basis. A survey conducted by EA revealed that only 14% have activated on more than one PC and less than 1% of users have tried to activate Spore on more than three PCs. By September 14, 2008, 10 days after the game's initial Australian release, 2016 of 2,216 ratings on Amazon.com gave the game 1 out of 5 stars, most citing EA's implementation of DRM for the low ratings. Electronic Arts cited Securum as a standard for the industry, and Apple's iPod song DRM policy as justification for the control method. Former Maxis developer Chris Harris labeled the DRM a screw-up and a totally avoidable disaster. The Securum software was not mentioned on the box, in the manual, or in the software license agreement. An EA spokesperson stated that we don't disclose specifically which copy protection or digital rights management system we use because EA typically uses one license agreement for all of its downloadable games, and different EA downloadable games may use different copy protection and digital rights management. A cracked version without the DRM was released two days before the initial Australian release, making Spore the most torrented game on BitTorrent in 2008. On September 22, 2008, a class action lawsuit was filed against EA regarding the DRM in Spore, complaining about about EA not disclosing the existence of Securum, and addressing how Securum runs with the nature of a rootkit, including how it remains on the hard drive even after Spore is uninstalled. On October 14, 2008, a similar class action lawsuit was filed against EA for the inclusion of DRM software in the free demo version of the Creature Creator. The DRM was also one of the major reasons why Spore is still one of the most pirated games to date, where within the first week of the game, over 500,000 people started downloading or downloaded it illegally from sites like the Pirate Bay. EA began selling Spore without Securum on December. 22, 2008 through Steam. Furthermore, EA Games president Frank Gabo announced that maximum install limit would be increased from 3 to 5 and that it would be possible to de-authorize and move installations to new machines, citing the need to adapt their policy to accommodate their legitimate customers. EA has stated by running the deauthorization tool, a machine slot will be freed up on the online product authorization server and can then be reused by another machine. You can deauthorize at any time, even without uninstalling Spore, and free up that machine authorization. If you relaunch Spore on the same machine, the game will attempt to reauthorize. If you have not reached the machine limitation, the game will authorize and the machine will be reauthorized using up one of the five available machines. However, the deauthorization tool to do this is not available on the Mac platform. In 2016, a DRM free version of Spore was released on GOG.com. Topic: Scientific accuracy. 
The educational community has shown some interest in using SPORE to teach students about evolution and biology. However, the game's player-driven evolution mechanism differs from the theory of evolution in some key ways. The different species that appear in Spore each have different ancestors, not shared ones, and the player's creature's evolutionary path is linear instead of branched. One species can only evolve into one other species, as opposed to into many related species. In Spore, the player's creature evolves along a path towards intelligence, instead of evolving solely in response to random genetic changes and pressure from its environment. In real-world evolution, there are many possible evolutionary pathways, and there is no endpoint except extinction. In the real world, an organism's environment shapes its evolution by allowing some individuals to reproduce more and causing other individuals to die. In Spore, the only things shaping the way the creatures change over time are game statistics and whatever the player thinks looks cool. In Spore, creatures have to collect new parts from other creatures or from skeletal remains in order to evolve those parts themselves. In reality, this does not occur, although in some cases organisms can appropriate the genes of other species. Bacteria and viruses can transfer genes from one species of macroscopic organism to another. However, this transfer is limited to single or occasionally multiple alleles. It never involves complex organs like mouths or limbs, as in Spore. In October 2008, John Bohannon of Science Magazine assembled a team to review the game's portrayal of evolution and other scientific concepts. Evolutionary biologists T. Ryan Gregory of the University of Guelph and Niles Elredge of the American Museum of Natural History reviewed the cell and creature stages. William Sims Bainbridge, a sociologist from the U.S. National Science Foundation, reviewed the tribe and civilization stages. NASA's Miles Smith reviewed the space stage. The science team evaluated SPORE on 22 subjects. The game's grades ranged from a single A in galactic structure and a B plus in sociology to Fs in mutation, sexual selection, natural selection, genetics, and genetic drift. In addition, Yale evolutionary biologists Thomas Neer and Thomas Prum found Spore fun to play and admired its ability to get people to think about evolutionary questions, but consider the game's evolutionary mechanism to be severely messed up. With this noted, study of how players make meaning with the game suggests that the game prompts more sophisticated thinking about evolution than the model the game presents. According to Seed magazine, the original concept for Spore was more scientifically accurate than the version that was eventually released. It included more realistic artwork for the single-celled organisms and a rejection of faster-than-light travel as impossible. However, these were removed to make the game more friendly to casual users. While Seed does not entirely reject Spore as a teaching tool, admiring its ability to show the user experimentation, observation, and scale, biological concepts did not fare so well. The snag is that Spore didn't just jettison half its science. It replaced it with systems and ideas that run the risk of being actively misleading. Scientists brought in to evaluate the game for potential education projects recoiled as it became increasingly evident that the game broke many more scientific laws than it obeyed. Those unwilling to comment publicly speak privately of grave concerns about a game which seems to further the idea of intelligent design under the badge of science, and they bristle at its willingness to use words like evolution and mutation in entirely misleading ways. Will Wright argues that developers put the player in the role of an intelligent designer because of the lack of emotional engagement of early prototype focusing on mutation. Intelligent design advocate Michael Behay of Lehigh University reviewed the game and said that Spore has nothing to do with real science or real evolution. Neither Darwinian nor intelligent design contradicting the argument that the game promotes intelligent design over evolution. Expansions Spore Creature Creator is the creature creator element of Spore released prior to the full game. In late 2008, EA released the Creepy and Cute Expansion Pack, which includes new parts and color schemes for creature creation. Among the new parts were additional mouths and eyes, as well as insect legs. The pack also included new test drive animations and backgrounds. An expansion pack named Spore, Galactic Adventures was released on June 23, 2009. It allows the player's creature to beam onto planets, rather than using a hologram. 
It also adds an adventure creator, which allows for the creation of missions and goals to share with the Spore community. Creatures can add new abilities, including weaponry, tanks, and crew members, as well as a section of the adventure creator that involves editing a planet and using 60 new flora parts. Bot Parts was an expansion part of an EA promotion with Dr. Pepper in early 2010. 14 new robotic parts for spore creatures were released in a new patch, the 6th of January 00, available only from the Dr. Pepper website. Codes found on certain bottles of Dr. Pepper allow the player to redeem these parts, albeit only for the USA, excluding Maine. It was only available for Windows PC, and was eventually extended to Canadian residents. The promotion ended in late 2011. The Spore Bot Parts Pack has caused controversy within the Spore community, because of many problems with the download and its exclusive nature. Spin-offs The Nintendo DS spin-off is titled Spore Creatures, focusing on the creature phase. The game is a 2D, 3D story-based role-playing game as the gamer plays a creature kidnapped by a UFO and forced to survive in a strange world, with elements of Nintendogs. Another Spore title for the DS called Spore Hero Arena was released in 2009. Spore Origins is the mobile phone, iPhone, iPod spin-off of Spore, and as with the Nintendo DS version, focuses on a single phase of gameplay, in this case, the cell phase. The simplified game allows players to try to survive as a multicellular organism in a tide pool, similar to Flow. The iPhone version takes advantage of the device's touch capabilities and three-axis accelerometer. A Wii spin-off of the game now known as Spore Hero has been mentioned by Will Wright several times, such as in his October 26, 2007 interview with The Guardian. Buchner confirmed it, revealing that plans for a Wii version were underway, and that the game would be built from the ground up and would take advantage of the Wii remote, stating, We're not porting it over. You know, we're still so early in design and prototyping that I don't know where we're going to end up, so I don't want to lead you down one path. But suffice to say that it's being developed with the Wii controls and technology in mind." Eventually, a spin-off under the title, Spore Hero, was announced, an adventure game built ground up for the Wii with a heavier focus on evolution. For a time, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 versions of Spore were under consideration. Frank Gabo, president of Electronic Arts Games Label announced that the publisher might use the underlying technology of Spore to develop electric software titles, such as action, real-time strategy, and role-playing games for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Wii. Spore Hero Arena is a spin-off game for the Nintendo DS released on October 6, 2009. Dark Spore was an action role-playing game that utilized the same creature editing mechanics. It was released in April 2011 for Microsoft Windows. The game was shut down in March 2016. Spore Creature Keeper was a spin off game developed by Maxis for Windows and OS X made for younger users. The gameplay was heavily based on The Sims. Originally planned for a summer 2009 release, the game development was eventually cancelled. Other media Topic. Merchandising There is an iTunes-style Spore Store built into the game, allowing players to purchase external Spore-licensed merchandise, such as T-shirts, posters, and future Spore expansion packs. There are also plans for the creation of a type of Spore collectible card game based on the Sporepedia cards of the creatures, buildings, vehicles, and planets that have been created by the players. There are also indications of plans for the creation of customized creature figurines. Some of those who designed their own creatures at E3 2006 later received 3D printed models of the creatures they created. On December 18, 2008, it was announced that players could now turn their creations into 3D sculptures using Z Corporation's 3D printing technology. The Spore Store also allows people to put their creatures on items such as t shirts, mugs, and stickers. The Spore team worked with a comic creation software company to offer comic book versions of players. Spore Stories. Comic books with stylized pictures of various creatures, some whose creation has been shown in various presentations, can be seen on the walls of the Spore team's office. 
The utility was revealed at the Comic Con International, San Diego on July 24, 2008 as the Spore Comic Creator, which would utilize Mashin.com and its e-card software. Spore, Galactic Edition, a special edition of the game, includes a making of Spore DVD video, How to Build a Better Being DVD video by National Geographic Channel, The Art of Spore Hardback Mini Book, a fold-out Spore poster and a 100-page Galactic Handbook published by Prima Games. Theatrical film EA, 20th Century Fox, and AIG announced the development of a Spore film on October 1, 2009. The movie adaptation would be a CGI animated film created by Blue Sky Studios. Chris Wedge was set to direct the proposed film. However, as of November 2018, the film remains in development hell. Topic. Soundtrack Cliff Martinez composed the main menu Galaxy theme track. Brian Eno created the generative music together with Peter Chilvers and is credited for the Spore compositions, Solar System, Timeline, and a few other tracks on Spore. Religious Vehicle Editor, Sporepedia, was composed by Saul Stokes. Use in academia Spore has been used in academic studies to see how respondents display surrogation. See also